The side control position is a very important situation for you to know and explore, especially as you're beginning your martial arts training. So you will find yourself here in bottom side control quite frequently, especially if you practice with more experienced training partners. So it's imperative that you know what to do from the bottom, how to escape, what are the techniques you're gonna use to escape, as well as what are the techniques gonna be employed from the top in terms of offense. So we're gonna look at the situation from both sides in this video. From the top, once you pass the guard, how do you stabilize the side control position, transition between the main variations of side control in order to maintain that control on top? And what are you gonna be trying to mount in terms of offense? So we're gonna look at the critical open elbow concept, which opens the way to a lot of attacks. So we're gonna look at the importance of having your elbows nice and tight on the bottom so you don't give opportunities for the person on top to pursue their dominance and execute more submission-based or striking-based attacks. From the top, we're gonna look at the main variations, how to transition, as well as how to progress your offense with attacks that are striking-based, so using knees, elbows in the beat down position, as well as what are the main submissions that you can do once you open up the elbow, uh, shoulder locks, kimura, americana, as well as how you can transition to an even more dominant position and how to prevent that from the bottom. So going from side control to full mount, side control to north south and there's a strangle there, or using the top spin technique to take the back and you can also get an arm bar in that situation. So. It's important that you know what's coming at you from the top, as well as that you defend those offensive movements as you're progressing your escape from the bottom. From the bottom, we'll look at the most common and high percentage escapes, which are the elbow escape or creating frames to create distance and regard, get your legs back in between you and the opponent, as well as the underhook escape, which are the two most common high percentage ones. We're also gonna look at a couple other ones that you might be able to use depending on what the reaction of the person on top is giving you and what type of pressure they are offering. Now, most importantly, we're really gonna look at the specific practice methodology that's gonna allow you to develop the skills of being able to escape the position, first of all, but also being able to maintain and stabilize from the top as well as progress your offense. So this is the critical concept that we call progressive resistance. So make sure you pay attention to this video, watch it till the end, take notes and come back to it as often as necessary so you can really remember those concepts, these techniques and be able to develop your skills when it's time to hit the mat and practice with a partner. Without further ado, enjoy. All right, Patrick Fulop here at Effective Martial Arts HQ. All right, side control. Let's look at the top position first. So this can happen many different ways in a fight, sometimes off of a takedown, but most likely off of a guard pass. If my training partner is here, she gets a grip on my leg, she puts me on my back, she starts clearing the frames here, clearing the legs, and now she's past the arms eventually, and she gets to a fully locked side control position when she has chest to chest connection, and she's cleared my arms. My preference, is to have my arms still in between her and I as she's passing the guard. So I have my last line of defense, which will be my elbow. So we're gonna look at that as a base to start working your escapes in the next section. We're also gonna look at guard retention in the guard video, so if you haven't already, subscribe right now to stay tuned. Now, assuming this is the worst case scenario, she's got the chest to chest position, she's cleared my elbows, and she's got the classic side control position. A couple of features of this position that make it work. So she wants the knee here right next to my hip, so it's a wedge that's preventing my hip from moving this direction. The other knee here is almost like a pillow right next to my head, and her hip here is close enough that I can't get that elbow in between her and I and in front of her hip over here. She wants to grip behind my shoulder here with her big finger, so she's anchoring herself to me, gives her a extra level of control. Her shoulder is making me look this way with a cross face, so that's weakening my postures, making me look the other way, misaligning my head from my hips. And then this arm is isolated with 360, so I can't bring it in front of her face. So it's wrapped around and her far elbow is locking my hip on this side. So I can't move my hip on either side. Now, as you are starting to explore the side control position, ask your partner from the bottom to just try to wiggle around. So we're, we're not really escaping very hard just to see if there's any holes in the position. So I'll try to kind of get my elbows in, try to get this arm in, try to maybe move my hips. But you can see now I have nothing to go with if she's holding the position. Now on a tactical level, we're gonna get to this in the next section, but if my goal is to escape, I don't wanna be escaping while she's holding the position very tight, okay? For, she's very controlling here, and this is good perhaps in a uh, self-defense, uh, bully prevention, or law enforcement situation. You can immobilize the person from here, but I'm not in immediate danger of being attacked. She's gonna have to transition to something else. So we're gonna look at the transitions that she can do from here. 
uh, I want to be exploiting that transition to do my escape. So we'll look at that in the next section. Now, the variations of the side control that she can use, and she needs to be comfortable transitioning to and from. So this is the classic. She needs to be able to go to scarf hold as well. So if she switches her hips here, controls this elbow, now she's got her hips in another direction here. Still a very controlling position. My arms are still, I can't do anything with them. I can only basically bridge, but I'm not really escaping anytime soon until I can organize my arms. The other thing she can do here is get this arm on the other side of my head and start attacking the far arm. So for this one, my arm is isolated, my elbow is far from my body, and that's a critical mistake on my part. And that exposes the far arm Kimura here, especially she wants to step over my head here so I have less mobility, and she starts getting my arm behind my back, so that hurts my shoulder. And the other common attack that I have to look out for is the same thing but the opposite side. So if my hands are pointing up here, my elbow 90 degrees, she can lock it up and start torquing my shoulder in the other direction and that also can eventually break the shoulder if I do not tap. So be very careful when you apply that, okay, don't take it past the breaking point, give time for your partner to tap. Now, she also needs to be able to transition to other more offensive positions and attack. So there are some strikes from here. She can knee me with the bottom knee over here in the body, so lifting the knee up and boom, knee to the body. She has to be careful about that because when she does, it kind of lifts the door open for me to escape. So I can insert this knee here and I can exploit that as an escape. But sometimes you can capitalize on it if you do it fast enough. She can also transition to a more offensive position that's striking base, one of my personal favorites, which is the beat down position. So she can open this elbow here, try to control it, get it to the ground and step over it with her shin. Now this arm is completely isolated and now she has a free arm to strike me. So I can't do anything but lift my head to protect my chin, but again, I'm gonna be taking damage. She can put it back down with cross face, and then elbow me, hammer fist me, so I'm gonna have a very bad day over here. So I need in this position, if I get here, my order of business is really to escape, so I wanna keep, put my, my palm down and start pulling my elbow out here. Now that might not work necessarily, so if she's very tight and her knee is close to my shoulder, I wanna turn on my side and do my best to retract my elbow to get into a more defensive position over here. Again, the better your partner is on top, the harder it's gonna be. We're gonna look at the practice methodology in a moment. Now, the other thing that she needs to be able to do is transition to more dominant offensive positions. So, the first one of which being the full mount, and that's what I need to goaltend from the bottom. So there's different ways to get there. First one is to transition to knee on belly. So she just slides her knee across my belly here. And now she's on her way by doing the windshield wiper, which we saw in the full mount video. She gets to the full mount without me being able to connect and control her legs. Now she's in a full mount position and I'm having a bad day for strikes and submissions. We looked at how to escape and how to practice this position in the full mount video. Check it out, cards above. The other way she can get to the full mount position is by going what we call negative. So she goes below both my arms on the far side over here and now she's lifting my elbows and now she wants to clear my leg and get her leg across to the full mount position. So I need to be goaltending these attacks as I'm working my escapes from the bottom. The other thing that I need to look out for is her transition with the top spin technique that she can use to go for an arm bar or take the back. So especially as I start turning to my side over here, there's a certain degree of back exposure, which she can exploit. So she can go around my body here and then isolate my forearm and then progress to an arm bar, break my elbow here. Or she can also use this technique to get to my back. So same entry, she goes here. And as I start escaping, she goes around and now she prevents me from turning back in by having a good position, seat belt, and now she starts taking the back here and now I'm back in back control and I'm in trouble. I'm gonna to need to escape from here. We're we'll gonna look at that in more detail in the back control video. And the last positional transition that I need to be on the lookout for is the north-south position. So if she starts walking her feet this way, she has different options to attack from here. So she can go for the forearm again, going for Kimura here. So she starts isolating this arm. She gets a figure four grip on it. And I want to protect myself. She's now elevating it. I'm gonna to try to connect my hands together. If I cannot, then she's gonna finish it with a shoulder lock. So this I need to be on the lookout for. And also she can also use the north-south position for a strangulation, so a choke on the blood vessels. So she goes here. Starts going to north south, especially if this arm is under here. Sometimes I can get out of this position here, but she can also exploit that opening by getting her arm under, and now I'm in the strangulation here. So we're gonna look, this deserves its 
entire tutorial, the north-south strangle and how to defend it. We're gonna look at that in more detail, but essentially you wanna push the face away. So we're gonna get back to that uh, in a future video. Now next we're gonna look at bottom position and make sure you watch till the end because we're gonna put it all together and explain the exact practice methodology that you should follow in order to build those skills both from top and from bottom. All right, now bottom position. So in this situation, your first order of business is really to defend the attacks that we previously saw in this section and then work your escapes. So that'll always come down to getting your arms organized in a nice defensive positions with your elbows nice and close to your body and then working these most high percentage escapes as well as certain other ones that will give you so you have all the tools to be able to get out of this position. So once again, starting from the classic side control position, here, now I do not have my elbows in front of me, my arms to defend myself. So my first order of business is gonna to be to organize my arms. In order to do so, one, I can exploit the transitions that she's doing. So as she transitions to any position, it sometimes gives an opening for me to get an arm on the inside. Or I can also try to create movement here by moving my hips. I can lift my hips or simply get my head away here and get this elbow. Most often, this elbow is the first one I'm gonna be able to get, getting my forearm in front of her hip over here. This allows me to create a little bit of space. Now, just so you know what you're gonna be goaltending from the top, as I get this elbow in front, she wants to peel it out. She's gonna cup it here and go use the scarf hold variation to pull my elbow out, and now she can reestablish her side control position, and I'm back to square one. So it's very important that I capitalize once I get the momentum of getting my elbows on the inside. So again, head here, elbow inside. If I can get this here, then that's, this is great. This is a great position for me. I have my elbow in front of her uh, neck. There's still stuff that she can do. She wants to pummel back, right? She wants to get this elbow back isolated. She can go underneath both arms here, and I wanna try to bring it back in the middle. She can pummel on the inside here. So it's gonna be a battle for elbow position we're in this situation, right? So let's just kind of freestyle it a bit. If I get this, I get this here. She wants to get this. I want to get back here. She wants to get under here. She can go for an arm triangle. That's the one we didn't mention. Here she can progress to the mount. I want to goaltend that. Try to block the knee. Grab a cross face. Here, so this is the battle that's going on for elbow position. So assuming I can get to my defensive elbow position here, I have the elbow on the inside and the other one here. The next step is going to be to do a shrimp. So look at the basic grappling techniques, uh, solo grappling techniques. We have a video, an entire video about the shrimp. But essentially, I'm putting my foot on the outside here, sliding my hips away, and then inserting my knee over here. From here, I want to try to create more distance by chest escaping. Maybe I can get this foot on the inside here with a type of lasso, or maybe I can get it here, make it back and get the knee, whatever the case may be. I want to try to get both feet in front of her and I. Uh, from here, from a fighting perspective, MMA, self-defense, my goal will be to get up. Uh, we're going to look at that in more detail in the guard situation. Once I get my feet, in between her and I, this is what we refer to as the guard. So once again, the elbow escape, most common escape, the first one you should try here, organizing the arms first, getting the frames in, escaping the hips, inserting the knee, and then inserting the other leg somehow so that I wind up with both my feet in between. And from there, this is a whole different situation. Now the other most common escape is we refer to as the underhook escape. So this would be when I get my forearm and I succeed in getting it under her shoulder over here, so I get an underhook on this side. From this position, I want to scoot my hips here and start facing her to get control of her leg. And then you, there's attacks I can do from here. I can go for takedowns, I can eventually go behind her to the back, but obviously it's going to be a fight. She's going to be trying stuff as well. She's going to try to hold my shoulder down, maybe go for a headlock. Yeah, there's different things that's going to happen from here. So this again is a different situation. We're going to explore more detail, but at least we're out of the side control position. So again, here, going for the underhook. I managed to get my frames in, I create a little bit of distance, and then I feel I have this opening here. I want to go transition and then get to my open turtle position. From there, I can offense with wrestling attacks, or I can also disengage and get back to standing, or whatever case may be. Now, a couple of possible counters that I need to goaltend as I'm doing the underhook escape. So as I start getting to my side here, I start getting the underhook, she could just stuff it and slide down here and get a cross face at the same time. So now my underhook is not worth much. I can't really lift her with it. I can't do much with it. So geez, this is a good way to counter it. And then I'm back to a side control position and I need to restart my escape. 
Another possible counter that I need to goaltend as I'm doing the underhook escape is I start getting to my side over here. She might slide her, her knee across my belly and go to the mount position as I'm escaping. So this would be a mistake on my part. So in order to prevent that, as I start getting the underhook, I want to goaltend here her hip with my knee and start blocking it as I escape. And then eventually get to my single leg position here as I have escaped. The other thing that she can do as well, it's not all, she can also use the underhook escape in order to get to her top spin. So as if I get a little bit further here, maybe I block them up, but she can get around here and get into an armbar. So if that happens, I want to turn and face her immediately and retract this elbow. So I want to pull the elbow to my body as soon as I feel that she's going for that arm and adjust my position so I'm always facing her. That's a basic principle of grappling and fighting in general. I always want to be facing my opponent. So if uh, we'll look at the armbar and defense in more detail later, but just once again, her counter to the underhook escape. So if I'm going here, I start getting to my side, I start getting the underhook here, I get a little bit far, and she goes around. As soon as I feel this is happening, boom, we track the elbow, and now this is a whole different situation. So she might go to north-south or central on the other side. So she has options, and I still need to work my escapes from there. Now here are a few other escapes that aren't quite as high percentage, but that you should be ready to exploit if the opportunity presents itself. The first one being the sit-up escape. So again, from the side control position, if ever I get on the inside of her arm here and I'm able to push her elbow far away from here. She wants to obviously not let this happen. She's gonna pummel back on the inside, use the limp arm technique, maybe use her knee, pummel in, and then reset her position here. So, but if I can use this and exploit it, if she's not reacting to it, sometimes I can get this elbow far behind me and start going up on this elbow here by maintaining a stiff arm. From here, if I have the C grip on the elbow, I can eventually retract the hips, and now we're back in the guard position. Once again, stiff arm, sit up escape. So we're here. If I manage to get control of the elbow and hold it far away here, I want to go with this elbow on the ground, get up on it, and then retract my hips here to re-guard. This is also possible on the other side, so sometimes she can answer that first escape attempt by getting the arm on the other side, and then I exploit that by going here, and again, I'm gonna try to escape my hips in order to re-guard and go back facing my opponent. Once again, that transition from the top here, maybe I go here, or as she's doing the transition, she gets the arm over, I use this momentum to stiff arm her elbow in the back over here. This elbow goes flat, I retract it under, and then I escape my hips in order to face her again, get my legs back in play. The other thing that I need to be able to do if the opportunity presents itself, if she goes to the north-south position and I manage to get my frames back in, so getting my elbows in between her and I, in this position I can use the rollback escape, connecting my knees to my elbows and then using the grips here to spin back to a form of guard. If that happens, she needs to be able to transition quickly and go back to sort of perhaps some form of knee on belly position. But if, I, if she doesn't react in time and I have my frames in in north-south, here, I can simply roll back and get my legs back inside, and now we're back in some form of open guard. So those are the main escapes from bottom. It's important to know what the common reactions to those escapes are from the top. And in the next section, we're gonna look at the specific practice methodology that you need to use in order to develop those skills from top and from bottom. All right, now perhaps the most important part of this video, albeit you need to know the techniques that we previously mentioned, is now how to make these techniques work for you. If you drill these techniques with absolutely no resistance, it's gonna be a very long time until you're able to apply them in live sparring, especially with more skilled opponents. So this is where the concept of progressive resistance comes into play. This is central to help you improve faster. And that's our mission here at Effective Martial Arts, to give you the tools to improve faster by using innovation in terms of techniques, but also practice methodology and teaching techniques. So using perhaps I want to develop my escapes from the bottom. And if my partner is more skilled than I am, she can modulate the speed and the level of her reactions in order to allow me to be successful most of the time, but still being challenged while I'm executing my techniques. This is going to be really central to helping you develop your skills. If you do the opposite, like you're not offering any resistance, it's a good first step. But then if you're, you don't have the opportunity to actually escape the position, you're just getting smashed, you're not developing your escaping skills either. So this is what it looks like. Let's say I'm a beginning student and my partner here is gonna help me practice my escapes. 
So she's not gonna go full out and attack me very, very hard, but she is gonna offer some level of resistance. So maybe I don't do anything and I don't know, okay, and what do I need to do? I need to do this elbow first, okay? So I get it here. All right, now maybe she fights me a little bit on this. So she kind of pulls it out and then I try to get it, but she doesn't let me get it too easy. So, okay, now, okay, finally I get it. I figure out how to get it. And now maybe I try to get this, okay? It's easy, good, I got it. But now maybe she pummels back in and she, that's it, denies it. And then she makes it a little bit harder next time. Her head's a little bit lower. Now I need to work for it. And perhaps I can figure out now that I can move my hips a bit. So even if I don't have this yet, maybe now I have my knee in, but then she can block with another reaction here. And now I can escape a little bit. She does a cross face. So, and then she can reestablish a tight side control position. She goes back chest to chest. So I'm almost escaped, but now I'm gonna work it again. Elbow here, and as I get a little bit better, maybe I succeed in escaping. And now I get the control, I get my legs back in, and I'm out. The next time I do it, she's gonna go a little bit harder with her reaction. So now she's gonna be a little bit more aggressive from the top, a little bit tighter, a little bit less space for me to work. So now I need to really figure out a way to create that space and get that elbow in here, try to get frames in and maybe the first escape didn't work so maybe I want to try to go to another one that we mentioned earlier here and then escaping the hips and now I'm up. So she's, she is offering me some level of resistance and progressive resistance at that. Next, you can also do that in both situations. So let's say she's the one who has less experience. Maybe I want to help her practice her top control. So now I'm going to adjust the level of resistance and she's a beginning student. So maybe her position is not tight at all, so I'm able to get this. I'm saying, okay, get, get rid of this. And she needs to figure out a way to get rid of this. And now I get this elbow, and I say, get rid of this. Get rid of this elbow. Yeah, very good. Good. Now, don't let me move my hips and go a little bit tighter on the hips. So, yeah, I remind her what she needs to be doing. Interactive coaching is a great tool for you, especially as instructors or more experienced martial artists. Maybe I pull here and I get this. Get rid of this. Good. Now let's say I want to coach her on how to get the knee on belly position. So now my knee is going to be here and I want her to, okay, so yeah, figure out a way to get your knee on the inside. That's it. Slide her across. Good. Now try to get to full mount. I want to wipe her and if she lets her foot, maybe I catch it and I say, okay, now you need to free your foot. So how are you going to do it? Use your laces. Yeah, good. Pull it out. Nice. Full mount position. Now try to retract back to knee on belly without me regarding it. Go back to knee on belly without creating any space. Good, elbow control is good, cross face control is good, don't let me catch your foot. Yeah, sit down, nice. And go back to side control. Good, now she's working her top control from there. And now let's see, now let's say I want to coach her to go to north-south. So she wants to go around my head here, good, stay tight, don't allow any space. Don't let me get this elbow on the inside, keep cross facing, that's good. Don't let me insert the knee, good, hip control, very nice. Don't let me get the frames in over here. Get around my, yeah, very nice, good, north south position. Here, control my hips, don't let it move too much. Good, I'll go back to side control. Yeah, without creating space, staying tight, very nice. And now let's say I try another escape and I want her to counter that, so maybe the underhook. Now here, counter this, stuff it, nice. Yeah, cross face, very good, okay. So this is the basic methodology that you want to remind your partner what to look out for and adjust the speed of your reaction in order for them to be able to apply their techniques. And then eventually you want to use this concept and if you're pretty well uh, paired with your partner kind of on the same level, you then want to isolate the side control position so you can work from there. So in that case, you're going to be trying your best to escape from the bottom and the person on top is going to be trying their best to execute their attacks and stabilize from the top and you see what happens. So now every time either the person on the bottom succeeds in escaping or the person on top succeeds in getting a submission or getting a convincing attack or transition from the top, you're going to reset and come back in the side control position. So this is really in order to develop your skills at side control and you should be doing that for every aspect of your martial arts training and striking, wrestling and grappling isolating different aspects so you can really work on that situation and develop your skills from there. This is going to help you improve much faster. All right, so those are the basics of the side control position. So quick recap, from the top, you definitely want to be able to stabilize the position, hold a tight side control, be able to transition to the scarf hold variation, attacking the far arm as well as going negative. 
Uh, you want to be able to transition to full mount using the neon belly transition. You want to be able to go to north south. You want to be able to take the back using the top spin. These are a little bit more advanced techniques, but you need to know at least know that they exist from the bottom so you can react to them. And then in terms of offense from top side control, you definitely want to be able to strike. So you got knees that you have to be using uh, cautiously not to give a window of opportunity for your partner to escape. You got your primary striking platform is going to be the beat down position from top side control. So isolating the arm. So you have one free arm to strike. And then you have also the far arm uh, Kimura or Americana, as well as when you do the top spin, you can go for an arm bar and eventually a back take that leads to a rear naked strangle. It's important as well from top side control that you're able to know when you're losing the position and apply the concept of tactics so tactical retreat so you can not give an opening to your partner to get a submission on their way of escaping. So you want to regroup and then reestablish your control in another or a similar position of your choice. So getting back to a controlling position when your partner starts to get the advantage, being able to transition fluidly within your control positions. From bottom position, we saw the most important thing is try to regroup and get your arms in a nice, sound, defensive position when your elbows are in between you and your partner. And from there, you're going to be able to work your escapes. So getting any order, getting your uh, near arm or forearm in front of the face or in front of the hips is going to be your first step in order to escape. The most common escape then is the elbow escape. So using your frames, elbow, and then connecting it to your knee to create distance between you and the opponent, and eventually getting your other leg back in place so you can reestablish your guard. The other most common escape that you're going to need to work is the underhook escape from bottom side control. So getting the underhook on the far side and getting to a single leg perhaps, or uh, then working for a takedown or a regard or standing up, whatever the case may be. There are also the other escapes that we uh, explored, which are not as high percentage, but you need to be able to use. So the uh, sit-up escape using the stiff arm, either on the near side or when the arm goes across the head, you can exploit that and get up using that technique. You got the rollback technique from north-south if you manage to get your frames in. And no matter the escapes, you also need to know how to counter them and be ready to answer those counters as well. So for the elbow escape, as you get your elbow in, the person needs to be able to clear that elbow using the scarf hold variation. If you start getting your elbow connected to your knee, they need to be able to clear that knee to reestablish their side control position. If you start getting an underhook, they need to be able to kill that underhook by putting pressure on it and perhaps using a cross face as well to extend your body. If you get a little bit further, there is a window of opportunity to get to the mount position as you're doing the underhook escape. So you need to, be able to goaltend that from the bottom and exploit it from the top if it's available. As well as if you get a little bit further in the underhook escape, there is that opportunity for the top spin either to the back or to the arm bar from that side control position. Now in all those cases, it's really important to use good timing to execute your escape. So you don't want to be escaping when the person is holding position very, very tight. You want to rather wait for those transitions to explode into your escapes. And you really need to be able to chain your escapes together to be able to counter resistance and recognize when one escape is not working, regroup, and then try another one and use them in combinations going with the energy that the person on top is offering you. So you need to be sensitive to that. And the best way to practice that really is use the critical concept that we call progressive resistance. So in order to develop your escapes from the bottom, you need to agree with your partner from the get-go that, okay, I'm going to practice my escapes. Give me as much resistance as I can handle. So the person on top, you really want to be um, appropriate in your amount of resistance and the techniques and the speed that you're going to use from the top so that your per person on the bottom is really able to escape, but they're being challenged optimally. That's really how you're going to build your skills. And conversely as well, for if you want to practice your control from the top and your attacks from the top, person on the bottom gives, needs to give you the appropriate amount of resistance so that you are executing your techniques, you're being successful, but you're being challenged. It doesn't work all the time. And that's really key to building your skills. And eventually, if you are pretty evenly matched with your partner, then you're gonna do what we call situational sparring, where you're gonna agree, okay, we're gonna stay in the side control position, I'm gonna do my best to escape, you're gonna do your best to attack and transition from the top, and we'll see what happens. But as soon as we get out of the side control position, we reset, and perhaps we can switch roles every time, or we can go back, I always practice bottom, you always practice top, whatever you want. So you can really build your skills in the side control position. And that's about it, guys. I recommend you uh, click like on this video. It'll appear in your liked videos. You can go back to it easily that way. Bookmark this page, add it to a playlist. 
Um, and subscribe to our channel if you have not already so you can access our videos easily. And also stay tuned because we've got a lot of high quality content coming your way in all aspects of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So that's what we did here at Effective Martial Arts in our school and on our channel. We basically created a belt system for MMA. So one curriculum for all aspects of hand-to-hand -hand combat, namely striking, grappling, and wrestling. So we really strive to give you all the tools for you to be able to stay safe and develop your hand-to-hand -hand combat and martial arts skills. So if you haven't already, subscribe right now. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for staying tuned and following our videos. It's a privilege to be able to share this information with you. If you have anything to say about this video, comment below. Is this concept new to you, the concept of progressive resistance? Have you heard about it before? Did you find it helpful? Did you try it? Will you try it? Let us know in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing your experience practicing these concepts and these techniques. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask below. I will be happy to help. So as always, it was a real pleasure. Signing off, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Pointe Claire, West Island of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thank you very much for watching. Practice well.